Welcome back. We are going to talk a little bit about, or we have been talking about, the digital disruptors and the trends in the real estate world for 2023 and beyond. Um, we've talked in the past about these technological advancements that are reshaping the traditional practices and are establishing a challenge to the new or the old norm, which is now going to become the new norm. So what I want to talk about is go back and retouch on each one of those topics that we mentioned, but I want to talk about the advantage and disadvantage of each one of these topics. And that's why it's important that you guys keep abreast of what's going on, because I don't want you to just automatically assume that technology is, is coming and it's an, an inevitable fact because it is coming. It isn't an inevitable fact, but yet there are disadvantages and downsides that you guys are going to have to be aware of. All right. So we talked about property listings. We talked about these online platform providers and the advantage to them was that they were able to host a, an extensive property listing and give the client, the buyer and the seller, a vast array of options, and they can access uh, the access to this, gives that client or makes them feel like they are empowered and control over this process. And it will, to some extent, it will also help foster some more efficient and informed decision-making uh, because it allows us to showcase properties into a much broader audience, reaching more buyers, more tenants, and uh, people that may have been overlooked under our traditional model of a localized, uh, centric-based information database. Now, however, the downside to this lies in the potential for information overload, all right? Consumers are gonna find it challenging to sift through all of these options, uh, all of this data, and that's gonna lead them to decision fatigue and could prolong the decision-making process. Um, uh, what is that? Uh, in college, they used to call this analysis paralysis, right? So the fact is, the good side is a lot of data is out there. The downside is too much data may be out there. So that's going to cause some delay or could cause some delay in decision making. And that's where you guys need to help step up and understand, A, how they got all that data and B, help sift through that data for them. All right. One of, speaking of the market data, uh, that is specific. Uh, remember, I told you that platforms aggregate and analyze data from various sources. So they will give that consumer market trends, property values, neighborhood dynamics, schools, uh, ratings, things like that. It's going to help them or equip them with more valuable information to make an informed decision. However, the problem lies in the, if they solely rely on the data that they received, how are we sure that that data is accurate or reliable? Inaccurate data or outdated data may lead users to pick a wrong choice. Uh, one of the things that we always talk about is when you go and read a topic, do you guys actually read the date of that topic was written? Because the one thing the internet is great at is giving data. The one thing the internet is terrible at is giving data because it doesn't remove old data. I mean, you could go back and look at a topic and get an article and, and say, oh, well, the world's flat. And I read it on the internet, so it's got to be true. But you didn't realize that that article was written in the 1600s. And at that time, that might have been the current prevailing concept. 
So you've got to understand that while all this data is out there, is it accurate data? Is it reliable data? And that may be your biggest challenge when dealing with a consumer who comes to you and says, well, I've got data that shows this. And you're going to have to, A, understand where they got that data and B, be able to either corroborate it or refute it by saying, well, you know, that was the data in 2004, but now here's the new data. A good example, that's interest rates, you know, oh, well, the interest rates 4.8%. Well, yeah, but you were reading January of 2022. It's now eight and a half or nine or four because you didn't get the most current data. We talked about the agent reviews. Uh, digital disruptors have elevated the visibility of a real estate professional now through all of these places where we can have profiles that allow a client to review us. So now com consumers can ask, access our experience, our expertise, our area of work, all of this stuff because of the transparency that these new digital platforms create. The downside lies in the potential for biased or misleading reviews, all right? Now, we all know that there have been people out there that have went to a restaurant and maybe gave a bad review because they didn't like the waitress. And, you know, so I told you my wife looks at reviews. She literally dives into and reads reviews and tries to understand, is the review actually a valid review? You know, if you're looking at a restaurant to go eat and the one star was given because the waitress was inattentive, that doesn't really reflect how the food may be. That's going to happen with agent profiles. So we have to understand that these can be manipulated, both good and bad. I mean, it's possible for an agent to manipulate their own uh, five-star rating. I mean, I hate to say that, but you guys are all shaking your heads. You know that's true. They can go in and uh, have friends make good reviews and all kinds of stuff and artificially boost that. So that's going to be a downside. When it comes to the cost savings, obviously one of the advantages is that there's going to be a cost savings, cost savings to the consumer because of these digital disruptors that I will eventually create these flat fee brokerages. We are in a race to the bottom and there will come a time that it's going to be done in such a manner that flat fee brokerages are becoming more and more common. I have already mentioned at least two, if you want to go back and listen to the last section. Um, these disruptors are challenging the traditional commission-based structure that we currently have and are going to give the sellers and buyers the option of a fixed fee for services. Now, this cost approach provides some flexibility and it will allow a seller or a buyer to align their needs with a specific broker. Of course, the downside is all going to come about because when you start paying less and less and less for anything, typically you start getting less and less reduced or more and more reduced services. I was going to say less and less good services, but we understand where we're going at, all right? This can lead to a concern about the quality of the service, the quality of the support, and most importantly, the overall professionalism of our industry during this entire transaction. You know, if we have a bunch of fly-by-night uh, flat fee brokerages that are just in it to score a quick, real quick commission and not really pay attention to the consumer, we're all going to take a hit from that, okay? When it comes to control and flexibility, digital disruptors empower the consumer by giving greater control and flex flexibility throughout the process because of all the things we just talked about. 
the data, the market data, the transparency, all of that. Now sellers can list their own properties, they can manage virtual tours, they can handle documentation. So there is a greater shift towards the control and flexibility that a the new norm is going to give the consumer. However, the disadvantage lies in the potential and oversight by individuals lacking the seasoned expertise that you and I have approached. Uh, have we have, all right? These DIY people increase the risk of a mistake in documentation, in negotiations, in legal matters. And the first one that comes to mind is the Fair Housing Act. How many out there don't understand the Fair Housing Act? It's going to be hugely possible for a homeowner to violate the Fair Housing Act because they didn't understand or have the business seasoned real estate acumen that you and I have and wouldn't let a client say, well, blah, 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 blah. And they don't know. So they go blah, 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 blah. And now there's a whole bunch of trouble. All right. We talked about the virtual tours, which I think are going to be a huge impact. Um, these digital disruptors now have found ways to integrate 3D walkthroughs, immersive virtual tours, and all of these allow buyers and renters now to explore the properties remotely. Uh, they enhance the efficiency of the home buying by cutting down the number of actual physical visits to a home. It allows them to see the property and it not only saves time, but it allows a, a wider audience to actually view this because there is no more geographical barrier for looking at a property. You know, people in California will be able to log on and walk through a house sitting in, you know, Roanoke, Virginia. That's going to happen. However, and you guys, I know you like how, how I say that because I say it all the time. However, there is a huge downside and potential for misrepresenting a property. Virtual tours may not capture all of the aspects accurately, leading to a discrepancy between what the virtual tour showed and what reality was during a physical visit. Now, you guys can all laugh, and there have been many, many times when I have taken buyers to properties and actually left that property and said to myself, you know, the guy that should win the award for this was the photographer because the pictures didn't represent the actual home. You know, they took the picture at this angle and didn't put the, the hole in the wall that was in the kitchen. Or they took they moved all the crap in the bedroom to one side and took a picture of that side of the bedroom. Now, imagine that on steroids with virtual tours and 3D walkthroughs. So there is going to be that downside. So these digital disruptors that are leading the new norm in the real estate industry, um, they are going to have a huge advantage for us in helping our client give services. However, they are going to also pose a lot of disadvantages that you guys need to be aware of so that when this starts taking place, and it already has happened, that you guys are going to be able to also help offset all of these advantages by going, hey, is that data current? Hey, is that virtual tour real? You know, all of these things that have been helped, that have created to leverage the overall user experience in the real estate is also going to be the downside to the real estate. So you guys have got to figure out how to strike a balance between leveraging both the advantage and the disadvantage with these challenges that will come with the new norm.